Yeah, it works. All right, guys, this week we got some charts here. Those are our notes. Yeah. yeah. So We charted the podcast this time. We organized. We, we do a little bit of prep work, but we never do much good quality handwriting. So um, That's not the point. So we're back. Yes, we are. This week we wanted to get into something. We kind of wanted to address the fitness industry from... The blue pill, red pill perspective. Yes. So, because we shot it yesterday for us, I yep. have no idea when you're going to see this episode. Whether it's... it will be after that one, I'm certain though. Yeah, it Not will be after. after. We just don't know when after. Yeah. It can be like three episodes after or whatever. For us, the uh, yesterday was the blue pill, red pill, and I believe this is a direct um, continuation of that, but toward the fitness industry. Yeah. <clears throat> and what the fucking blue pills are. And I want to pull up actually, while I have it here. Um, the reason we had started talking about this was a quote from that uh, Matt Taibbi was yeah. on Rogan's I podcast like a, a while back. He's a um, he's a guy who wrote a number of books on the financial crash, the two eight. Yeah. Actually, wrote his uh, read his books. I can't remember the the names of it, but he wrote it about the financial crash, the how it happened, everything. Yeah. It was the same thing as I remember the Big Short. Yes. Right. Yeah. So he wrote uh, a book that was ex honestly quite as good from another side of how the crash happened, who made money, who mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's mind blowing. He's been a writer for Rolling Stones for a very long time. Yeah. Kind of he's, a, he's a great a journalist. journalist, journalist, a real yeah. journalist, like and they, what, the way they used to make, yes. <laughs> used to make them. You know that he grew up in Russia. I believe so. I yeah, think he's I did fluent know that, in Russian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. He, yeah. um, but but what he had said, he was talking about the. Uh, the business of journalism now yeah. and what it's what it's turned into and kind of what yeah. you, kind of what you need to do to even have a job yeah. on a, as you get above a certain level what it takes and uh, the thing he says is this job used to be telling you that you were wrong about something now the job is to confirm that you're right and and that is of course absolutely the case if you watch news and all of those yep. things when you see how those things are presented it's like everything is seeking confirmation bias or outrage and nothing in between yeah yes. and 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 we start to see though that that people seeking and offering right. confirmation is like what the fitness industry does now it's at well, least actually, how they make money. I, I believe but that's the thing is I, I think we criticize the media for that yeah for like but basically what they're doing is giving people what they want mm -hmm. and that's been going on around for outside the media for a very long time and yeah. the we all I've been falling into this, I believe, for a very long time. I just think now in today's Western culture, for whatever reason, it's reaching a point where it's becoming dangerous. And I think the fitness industry has been dabbling in toward that dangerous line for quite a while yeah. now. They, they, you see that with, oh, we're going to talk about it, but like from, look at what the, the body, bodybuilding has promoted. Like it used to be, like uh, Dorian Yates was talking about that, where when he, when he was training, when he was like 20, so we're talking like 25 years ago, he didn't even know what steroids was. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, he, you walk into gyms and there were a few documentaries done on that with kids that are 18 years old. So pumping mm -hmm. testosterone in their system yeah. already on the, on the amount of gear that the guys in the 90s were taking. I was watching a, a stuff where they were showing what Chris Cormier, Flex Wheeler, what their cycle was. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they were comparing it to the average kid in the gym right now. And the average kid is actually taking more yeah. than the, the pros in the 90s, if you take growth hormone out. Yeah. But the amount of gear are pure steroids, because growth hormone is a peptide, not a steroid. Yeah. It's also expensive. So there's a it's lot of those younger expensive. guys yeah, aren't exactly, able to afford Exactly, right. Uh, but they were t showing like the gear, the pure steroids. And we know because of YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of guys, a bunch of assholes out there, giving absurd cycles for people to do. Well, what I think too is, is I see, I see two sides of it, right? I see, it bothers me when I see things, I used to always say this about the supplement stuff and how these professional athletes, especially in sports like Strongman, yeah. where like, I hate to break it to you, but most of the guys that on the creatine. stage like are not just up, up there because of their fucking sweet creatine or protein that they're getting paid to tell you about. Creatine and genetics. And now, I also believe, so in my head, I believe that it would be nice if they were just be able to be openly and communicate just mm -hmm. about it so that these young kids don't just believe mm -hmm. that if they overpay for this fucking mm -hmm. protein and stuff that they're going to be able to do that. However, I also sit on the other side of that going, God, but if they really told all these, and these kids yeah. knew what they were taking, those kids would just take that. 
which is also true. So maybe it's best that they just say to have a don't ask, don't tell policy publicly right. and then everybody can get paid. But like you said, if someone's going to put out information like that, that's it starts as just information. This guy took this. Yep. Dorian Yates took this. What people take that as is not information, as something that happened to some guy kid, and they take it as advice. As an objective. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess yeah, yeah. advice now. Like, oh, well, Dorian Yates did this, I want to be bigger, he's bigger. Yeah, Let's but that's just... the problem, is the dude who's taking more than Dorian Yates weighs 200 pounds. Yeah. Where Dorian Yates was 310. Yeah. And Mr. Olympia. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get one thing that's gonna be better than Dorian Yates out of there, and you're gonna get some big old titties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. You, but, so no, but that's my biggest insane. problem with all this is that we are. It's exactly the quote from from Matt Taibbi, mm -hmm. which is, uh, "We're gonna confirm that you're right." So in that case, what does that mean? It's all the people saying, "Oh, it's all steroids." Yeah. If I were to take what they take, mm -hmm. I'd be like them. No, because now you do, and guess what? You're not like them. Yeah. But that, that bothers me always with the CrossFit Games, yeah. where people are like, oh, they take steroids. I'm like, you can take gear. Take, by the way, it's not always proven. Like, so, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them truthfully got tested uh, positive for tainted either supplements or meat. Mm -hmm. When you have clinical levels that are 100 times below the accepted levels, why are you getting banned? Well, that's the question I was asked. Like, all right, there should still be a false positive threshold in there somewhere too. Like, like if it's a hundred times below what it is, why are they? No, but why are we having a threshold if we're not gonna? Yeah. Like, the thing is, past that level, you're banned. That's fine. But if you're below that level, why are they getting banned? Mm -hmm. Like, that's zero policy. Knowing what I know about the fitness, uh, yeah. the supplement industry, is absurd. Anyway, yeah. but so you have yeah, too then many. Why is there a threshold? <laughs> Yeah. It should, it should just be yeah then why is there a fresh yeah. but that bothers me people saying yeah yeah but look like they made the games because they took steroids I'm like bullshit take steroids try to make the games go ahead I double dare I dare you I double dare you say what <laughs> one more time if you think you can like the reason they're there is because they take steroids you are fucking yeah. deluding yourself yeah absolutely I mean, that's, but, so but, I, but I also the, think uh, that like you said with that with the CrossFit games not just from the drug standpoint yeah. CrossFit with strong man with powerlifting all of it people kind of get this maybe it's changing now but they kind of get this impression and I think a lot of coaches encouraged it for a while there like yeah, you can be a regionals athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and like, yeah, sure. And they just kind of got all these people under that thing, like this constantly telling them what they want to hear shit. Exactly. And, and I, I think that's the true uh, problem is that. Yeah. Is people telling people what they want to hear. Why? So they can sell shit. Yeah. Is there not what the problem is in the fitness industry where we're trying to fight against all the time? Again, back to the Mag Tahibi stuff. Is the job used to be tell you that you're doing certain things wrong. Mm -hmm. Is that not the job of a coach? Is that not why you're hiring me? Actually, no. Because I had people hiring me to tell them to do what they want my way. But I'm like, but if that's not what you need, it didn't matter. Yeah. They didn't want me to tell them what they need. They, they wanted me to make them do what they want. But then you don't need me. It is a, it, but this to me is an, an indictment of where we are as, a, as an industry. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you have an athlete who comes to you and says, uh, say a mid-level, elite-level athlete comes to you and says, listen, I, I really want to be able to try and make it to the games. I'm, I'm looking for a top 15 finish at least this year, blah, blah, blah. And you kind of go through some things with them and you come to the conclusion pretty clearly that like, there's no way you're going to do this this year, or at least you're not yeah. going to do that with them this year. Like, I'm sorry, like, if it was me, we'd start over some of these things, and then next year would be your year, but I'm not going to just let you yeah. burn your shit out this year. That's not what I do, right? But they go to the next guy who yeah, says, say yes. who says, yeah. who says, yes, certainly, whatever. And but this that's works, who they're going to go to. But this works because there is a next guy. Yeah, and because there's money changes yeah. hands and the money's going to reward yeah, that. Yeah, but he goes, okay, but he goes, he go, that's one thing, right? Where you go like, well, how do you know? Well, I know because it's my job to know. But um, <clears throat> going back to the objective versus constraint argument always, uh, that's, it goes further than that. Like, for example, you have a guy who says, I want to come and I want to get stronger. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a constraint versus uh, what's that on the computer? Okay, it's not dying. No, no, no. Okay, good. Your, um, your internet's weird, so my VPN keeps popping up telling me yeah, something's you wrong. You use a VPN. Yeah, I gotta have that American exactly. Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> Americans got Americans got the dopest Netflix. America. <laughs> Actually, that's true. Um, 
Right. So a guy comes to you and say, I want to get stronger. That's a, a constraint. Mm -hmm. I just, it's a yeah. you know, long-term goal. I just want to get stronger. So how do I milk this, especially for money or stuff like that? Well, that's easy. I'm going to turn it into an objective instead of being a constraint. Mm -hmm. So look, if you deadlift more, you're stronger. Already, I have a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, well, that's how you, how you define strength. By the way, is deadlifting the way <clears throat> we call a deadlift means you are strong. Well, that was the, the jest I was making about full range deadlift. Who's to say you have to deadlift exactly from that position of the floor for it to be a good lift? Why not higher? Why not lower? This is a completely arbitrary yeah. uh, notion that with the barbell, of the, it's because it's more convenient because we can put plates and everything, but that doesn't define strength. Mm -hmm. Is it a, a good uh, exercise to measure strength? Yes, but not as a target. So let's say, again, I want to be strong, you get to the gym. I'm like, well, I'm going to make you gain 20 pounds on your deadlift, and therefore, I made you stronger, okay? What is performance? Performance is neural output, it's muscle capacity, and it's skill. All three things. If I increase all three things, you get stronger yeah. overall. But let's say I want to make you 20 pounds on your deadlift. What if I just correct your form because your form is horrendous? Mm -hmm. Then all I got is I got your skill on the deadlift better, right? Yeah. And then you get 20 pounds on that. Did I make you stronger? No. No, I didn't. You're I only just... more capable in that one channel. Exactly. I just improved the skill. Yeah. But then from there, I go, see, I made you stronger. Thank you for $100. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to do it. Yeah. And you see that in seminars all the time. Like Dave, Dave Tate talks about it all the time. You're giving someone for an hour, he'll put 50 pounds on their squat. But you didn't get stronger in an hour, you're just better at the squat. So if you come and you ask me, uh, make me stronger, and then I give you a better form on the deadlift, I did not give you what you asked. I milked the system and an objective-based system in order to lie, yeah. in order to make money. Because it is a lie, you're not stronger, you're just better at that lift. It's yeah. not the same, it is not the same thing. And well, we, we also run into it though quite often in things like like in nutrition as well. Oh yeah, and That's and so one. what what we see when we were talking about this earlier is in the telling people what they want to hear, the first thing that pops into my head is the if it fits your macros way of eating. The right. and 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 frankly, what you, want. you tell me this: if you're in a if you look around, what's out there for the online space in nutrition? Yeah. And I'm not here just shitting on the online nutrition space, but I see a, almost all of it revolves around. Macro counting, of course, yep. Because you can really, it's just really scalable, to be honest with you. <laughs> and 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 it's but, like a barbell. Yeah, and you can just go here. You go and here you go and here you go. And, oh, you're not gaining. Eat more if you're not losing. Uh, plus, you know, uh, like like it's just it's very simple. But the thing that the people who get into it want to hear is like, oh, I can still eat pizza. Oh, I can yeah. still eat ice cream. I can still, and it's. Let's talk Maybe about it the. Does it doesn't really yeah. work that way. Let, let me, let's talk about macros, because there's a client, right, that, mm -hmm. that say that a calorie is a calorie, I can eat pizza. Yeah. And then there's the side that people don't see on the other side. You know why macros are so. so enfin, he knows, but may, uh, you guys, why macros are also so um, popular amongst nutrition coaches? It's very simple, because it's very easy to create a website for it mm -hmm. and a system. As a, you go out there, you have plenty of stuff where you can you can do that, where you put all your goals into one thing, and then you come up you come up with a nice program on the back end that's going to send you a nice P PDF with graphs and pictures and pop-up pictures that yep. have colors and it there looks awesome. There might be awesome. a recipe in each thing, or you and can do anything thing you and want. everything. And I that can was add done. layers on layers on exactly. layers. Exactly, and that was done customized for you, even though it's exactly the same software. I yeah. put everybody in, regardless. We could of... take 500 people an hour if we wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah. so easily. Yeah. And but the, everything looks like it's customized to you because that's how good the in, the uh, industry is at that now. Yeah. You'll come up with all that because they, we all got that shit from Starbucks and all that stuff. Well, they know how to send you the emails. They know how to send you all stuff. So you take that fucking like Walmart, Starbucks system, you apply it to nutrition and you get something that looks so good. But at the end, it's not personalized based on whether you're sleeping or not, men versus women. Like men versus women, they do, but like there's so much, are you stressed that day? Like how are you, all that stuff. There's so much that goes into, into all this, but with the macros, I don't need to go into all that. Mm -hmm. You're 160 pounds, you're 
that percentage of body fat and everything, I just need to make you eat that much carbs and this. And once in a while, I'm like, oh, easy on the sweet potatoes or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But basically, eat more rice, eat more carbs, eat more, eat more protein. Rarely eat more fats. It's not a, often. It's really what you're doing too in that case. You're just eating numbers. Like that's kind yep. of what you're doing then. It's like, well, I got my 40 and then I got my 20 and it's just, it's... Whether you're hungry or not. Yeah, and, and, and your your cravings don't know or care. Your like none of those yeah. things are so what you're you doing your is periods. like it's it's like it's like one person's playing a game in the same room on a PlayStation and the other person is playing it on an Xbox. Yeah. And you're just it's not gonna fucking get together. Yeah. They're not on the same operating system. Your yeah. body doesn't know what exactly fucking forty grams it doesn't yes. know that it wants forty grams. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the idea, that it, the idea that it does or is what needs frustrates. 40 grams. And by the way, 40 grams of food ingested is not 40 grams of food digested. Yeah. Your digestion changes the amount of food that goes into your system. Because you can eat food not digested and just push it out yeah. and poop it out. In that case, the 40 grams didn't go anywhere, but through. Yeah. So how does that fucking work? How can macros that don't include Digestion work. I never understood that part. Mm -hmm. They still, and no one, still to this day, no one has managed to explain to me that one. Yeah. When I explained Mac and John, if you're unsympathetic, you can't digest. The protein that you're eating is not being digested. On top of how much, how harmful it is for you, you're still not getting the protein grams in your system. So what does that mean? Eat more protein? Yeah, right. Just keep piling on. You'll get, you'll get more of what you need. Right. And you'll get more of the it's, bad piling but up. The, but, but the key is, this is what you want to hear. Yeah. You want to hear that you can still have... The, that's why, like, uh, as long as it fits your macros, got so popular, because mm -hmm. they literally told you, you can have pizza if you want to. Yeah. You need someone to tell you that, no, pizza and sweet potatoes are not the same when it comes to carbs. It's not the same. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not saying you, I'm not putting a gun to your head to <coughs> not have pizza, but it's not the same. I also think that because it's in that way where it makes them acceptable and routine, because then food is just a number, there isn't any actual feedback negatively that you're expecting from your body then of those. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you ate your pizza and it fit in your thing and you kind of feel like shit a little but bit. But you're not going to associate And you're like, well, no. No. Yeah. Not, like, it's from something no. else. I'm stressed today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And th that's my biggest problem with all this is we uh, it allow us to detach yourself from your own incorrect behavior. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, we talked about this in that podcast. Like the easiest way to create a truth is to have people repeating, like different people that are from a position of influence, repeating the same thing. Yeah. And if they say it often, it becomes a consensus, it becomes a truth. And that kills me because what if those people have in mind more making money than your well-being? And the fitness industry is not out there yeah. for your well-being. It's out there to make money. So, But you have five people, five influencers that realize that if you say eat carbs, it works a lot better than eat fat, for example. Then you get five of them do like a bullshit study or use five athletes that they're paying to represent their brand even though they're not doing mm -hmm. anything that that brand is saying to do or whatever. You get those 10 people repeating the same thing, it becomes a truth. Yeah. Like it was a whole stuff about niche and illusions where, uh, you know, truth are illusions that we forgot were illusions. It's, that's basically what, and so that kills me in the fitness industry because then we are, and for people to allow that because then suddenly people start to gravitate toward the people that tell them what they want to hear. And at the expense of your health. Yeah. But like it if we know feels so, better to be told that I can, yeah, exactly. that, I, that one, that I'm just fine. I can do what I want to do. I'm you not doing do anything wrong. Want. Exactly. I'm not making any mistakes. Right. The problem is just the way that I look is the problem. So the problem I is, can just change. That's your mom's I eat job. numbers. Not your dad's yeah. job. Yeah. Your mom is there to support you in everything that you do, even though when it's fucking stupid. And your dad is there to tell you to not do the stupid shit. So yeah. you'll hate him for it, but you also <laughs> will need him for it. Yeah. And that's conversation I had with my daughter two days ago. You know, we, she told me she needs the structure. Like, yeah. no, you're going to bed at 10 because otherwise she goes to bed at 1 in the morning and she's exhausted the next day. Mm -hmm. Someone has to be daddy. That's the job of a coach is to yeah. say, no, this is not working that way. And we talked earlier that I, I was kind of reflecting back who I had kind of had as coaches over in, in right. sports and all those things. And, and it's like, if you really think back, if you ever played mm -hmm. sports, who the best coach had, truly the best coach that you had. It's probably not the person that made you feel like everything that you were doing was okay each time you were in the gym. 
or each time you're on the court or each yeah. time on the field. Like, it's it's going to be the person who did what they needed to do to get you better, to get the best out of you. And then when you're able to actually get the best out of yourself, then you can you're empowered to continue yeah. to you know what I mean. Then you've learned those skills, and you know you learn confidence. And too. I'll tell you this, yeah. I you know I had a lot of years sometimes with sports where. The, get used to people just assuming that you're good and the talent was going to go a certain way. But then all of a sudden, if you have somebody who's like, just not going to take any shit yeah. from you because you're good or not, it's like, these are my fucking rules. This is the way it's going to go. You you're don't wrong. get to be out yeah. of shape just because you're good when you're on the court. Yep. You just, I'm going to make you play every minute of a game and not bring you out to rest just to punish you for how yes. out of shape you were. Yeah. And you're going to die and suck air in front of a thousand people watching. And then we're gonna do it again the next week till you just get in better shape. That's fucking miserable. That is not yeah. what I want to hear. But I Made sure as shit got in better shape a lot quicker. And I fucking listened and did what but, I was told. But when did I learn jiu jitsu? Why did I learn jiu jitsu correctly? Because John Machado choked me 3,000 times. Yeah. He was like, no, no, no. Yeah. And I'm like, I can do this. Try. No. And then he proved me wrong. Uh, literally 3,000 times. I mean, actually, more because, than that. Because he tapped me 3,000, but he probably proved me wrong a million. And to go yeah. back to Travis, when we talked before about emotional balance, is that like yeah. the lessons that make you feel good, the, those little things that don't respond to make you feel good, don't fucking make you learn anything. You're not even feeling good, you're just not feeling bad. Yeah. Which so, is where people are, even with the macros and everything. What they want is they just don't want to be miserable. This is the problem with that way of getting what you want. And uh, it was Bill Meyer that was talking about the feminization of American culture for a long time. But if you look, what you have now in today's society really is mommy's voice, mm -hmm. where we're going to be agreeable with people, we're going to give them what they want. Yeah, that's mommy's side, which is good, by the way. We need mommy's side. But you can't have just mommy's side. Yes. You need daddy's side as well. You need to be pointed out when something is wrong, because otherwise it's at the expense of your health. Like the John Machado did not let me muscle my way through Jiu-Jitsu because he was incorrect. Yeah. And he was like, look, and you're very strong. Even though that's going to work on 90% of the people you're going right. to come across. But I would never turn into a black belt. But you're not going to get any better. You're never yeah. going to get better. And yeah. so he was like, you're very strong. That's great. How about we work on this and this? And at first, I was like, no, <laughs> because what are, what, what are you saying? It was like, what I'm saying, <laughs> that. Yeah. Right, let me try again. <laughs> and then by time 3,000, because I'm fucking that stupid, I was like, Maybe there's something to the whole <laughs> jiu-jitsu thing is a technique thing. May yeah. Maybe. Let me try again. <clears throat> no, okay. Right. So technique, let's start. It, that's, that's what the job is, to yeah. show you that you're doing certain things wrong. There was a bit that I saw that was really funny. It was, the, it was on The Onion. And I think they had <laughs> said Sometimes about funny. how uh, finally they, they got rid of, uh, they made up some numbers, like a hundred and, probably accurate, I don't know, 150 million Americans are obese, mm -hmm. right? And they said, what are we gonna do about this statistic? How are we gonna fix this? And they said, well, perfect. We just changed the BMI for obesity <laughs> exactly. from 35% or 35 to, I mean, I don't, know, I don't yeah. even know what it is, to, to 50. And now there's only 20 million obese people in the US. Okay. And like, right. and, and, and that's kind of the thing. It's like, and they, then they kind of went through these fake interviews with people who were like, you know, it's just really great. All these years of hard work to finally, you know, I'm 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 not obese anymore. It's great. It feels good. And but that's exactly but that is what we're exactly doing. Exactly what we're doing. And you know what? By the way, good hard law. When a measure becomes a target, it seems to be a good measure. This is what happens when you have an objective-based yeah. system. Is you game it? How do you game it? You just change the BMI. For example, it's and uh, not the BMI, but the weight or whatever. Yeah. They did it for statin medication when they keep lowering the, the, threshold, the number, the, the threshold of the cholesterol you're supposed to have. So every single, like, I think it was three years. Everyone qualifies. <laughs> we got a stage where they like, so they keep saying, like, there's a bigger cholesterol issue. Well, yeah, because you keep lowering the threshold. Yeah. So they can sell more pills. It's a fucked up mentality. But that's what the objective stuff yeah. is giving us. It is so fucking dangerous. Well, and I think this objective stuff, when we talk about the nutrition and the movement and training coaching thing, right. it really turns into you walk up to someone and you present them with a goal. Now, that goal you communicated to them in the best way that you knew yeah. how, with the best words. And often with the way the whole structure is in the fitness industry, it is on objective. So people do expect to come in and say, I want to lose 15 pounds or I have 20 oh, pounds. Six pack, though. But yeah. that's not what they want. We've talked about in the past. Yes. They want to like the way they look in the mirror. All they want to like themselves. As a coach, it's your job to know that. I agree. And to give them what they really need that will also encapsulate what they want at some point. However, though, this is when we then 
take, okay, cool, you wanna say, you want 10 pounds? I don't know what that fucking 10 pounds is. I can do anything with that. Cause I can make that 10, you get 10 pounds off and not gonna like the way you look. And it's not even being malicious. Maybe some people just don't know. What if you're 10 pounds of muscle? But if it's 10 pounds and then it's another 10 and another 10. But if you're 10 pounds of muscle? Well, what if someone's got 50 pounds to lose before they're gonna yeah. like the way they look? Yeah. Or they're just never gonna like themselves. Like, you know, right. for all the reasons, yeah. And so, so the problem is, is by they come in and they present you with this thing. You take it and you just move the goalpost because they presented it to you because you're supposed to be the expert. Exactly. You're supposed to know what this means. Yeah. Because as if a client came to me and says, Tyler, my furnace is making this boom ka clock clock noise, I don't go look through the thing and be like, well, there is no boom ka clock clock and I come back and I don't say, well, oh, the boom ka clock clock is going away, but your furnace doesn't fucking heat. Or you put some proofing inside yeah, the basement. it's just not yeah. going to work. And so, but when they come and present you with this 10 pound goal, <laughs> your job is to know, all right, that rattling in that furnace probably means something got sucked into the blower. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pull yeah. that out. Yeah, they'll get their 10 pounds, but what they want is yeah. to be able to sleep and they want their fucking heat to work. And when they come in yes. and they want 10 pounds off, it's because they want to look and feel better or whatever. But it's That's not the, the 10 pounds. Part. And you it's, cannot point them to that goalpost. And exact, And I think the, the biggest idea is exactly what you just nailed, is that it's like, that's not your job. Yeah. That's not what the job entails. No. We are more than this. Oh, okay, so let me rephrase that. Let me ask you, is that what you want as a coach? Is that what you think coaching is? Because mm -hmm. if you do, we're not in the same fucking business. Yeah. That is not what I do. That is not what I do. That is not what a coach is. I've said that I don't know how many times. We are the most important people out there. People see the doctor twice a year. I haven't seen a doctor in probably 10. Yeah. Uh, but you see your trainer twice a week. You go to see your coach, at the, at the local powerlifting or CrossFit box five times a week. Like we are the people that can actually create change. Yeah. Who else will do it? Not the medical uh, world, like in the US, just going at the emergency room is $1,000. Anything costs you a shitload of money. So who else is gonna initiate the change? Yeah. Like what matters most, movement, um, Nutrition, so, like we are in charge of all that because we are the only people that don't use just pills to get there. And and like anything, and I think we run, not we, I run into this in other businesses, legally speaking, uh, as a professional, as a person who is the expert, it is actually not your job to just take the transaction with which they communicate to you. There is trust that is implied. It's actually often legally binding. Uh, to draw an analogy, something I know of, if you, Julian, if you said, Tyler, I want you to put a furnace in my house. Perfect, Julian, you need this one. Well, that other one is $1,000 cheaper. And I can say, well, listen, Julian, that other one is too small to heat your house. And you're gonna say, fuck it, put it in. It doesn't matter what we say after that. If I put that in knowing that it's too small, even because you told me to and you wanted yeah. it and you're paying for it, in the end, when it doesn't heat your house and you take me to court, the judge will say, and I've seen it happen, they will say, but that guy doesn't know anything about this. You do. So your job is to not put something in that's not gonna fucking work. And, and as a professional, as a coach, what the fuck are you doing? So I have <laughs> like, never seen that happen to any coach in the fitness industry. Never. Maybe, so you know like there's a whole fight right now, like last man is saying like you don't want people to tell you certification mm -hmm. and this and that, but- and be better. <laughs> right, right, so we have, yeah, exactly. So yeah. we have two choices here. Either we, as a community of coaches, decide to get better, or we're gonna need regula regulations in mm -hmm. place. Because if you think that uh, the 10 pounds is all they want, and I'm gonna make like them 10 pounds at the expense of their health, then we're just drug peddlers. Yeah. This is basically dealing drugs. Like this, in order to make money, you're one step away from that. Like, like heat technicians have more ethics yeah. Then we do as coaches. And I'm not the only We have a problem. Body and pain and then nothing. Like we that. have a problem. Yeah. And that's my, my biggest thing that I see in the fitness industry now is that. It's like I'll give people what they want so I can make money. You are in the wrong fucking job. Even heat and air conditioning technicians yeah. have more ethics than you do. And, you and they, are, they are legally binded more than you are, even yeah. though you deal with the body. Yeah. That's, his, that's some yeah. scary thought right there. Yeah. And but I think also though, maybe there's part of it is that as a coach, you want it to be a good and rewarding thing. As me as a service technician, when I was doing that work, nobody, while I can be nice and people can like mm -hmm. me, nobody wants me in your house that day. Cause that means your shit quit working and now yeah. you've got to spend a lot of money. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. 
out. <laughs> so, yeah. so like, while, and I've had great customers over the years who would say, I really like you, but I kind of like to not have to see you for yeah. a couple well, of years. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 but, but as a coach, it's a little bit different is you like right, the so high fives enough. and you like the right. things, but you don't want to be able to sit down with somebody and say, I don't think the way you're going about right. this is right. So, you have to be the fucking so bad guy So we sometimes. chose a hard profession. Yeah. Okay, I agree. Yeah. This is a hard profession to get into. We are not being considered in society as important people. When you see movies, it's mostly mm -hmm. the guy banging his, uh, his clients or like the, yeah. you know, the sleazy guy, the guy who can't do anything else, yeah. basically. We are very much not considered. We have the job of a... Uh, physical therapist and a psychotherapist at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all true. This is a very hard job that is not rewarding that much in money or thank yous. Yeah. And that's true. But is that what you wanted? If you want money, go work in the bank. If yeah. you want thank yous, sell ice cream. But when it comes to telling people what they want or telling people what they want to hear, it seems that that all sounds to me like someone who has an aversion to just having a difficult conversation. That's it. And, and I think in coaching, that is the case. Everything wants to be feel good and motivation and people not knowing that the, some of the best advice I've got is you'll only be as successful as the amount of difficult conversations you're willing to have. And that doesn't mean success is financial success. That means success as what do you want to accomplish? You're in only your going to be able to accomplish that if you're able to put your foot down when it needs to be done and keep things on track. And that happens with helping other people, helping yourself, doing uh, But by the way, doing that, how many hours does it take yeah. to be able to learn to have difficult conversations? And how much energy there's does no it take? There's no school for that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's no school for that. You yeah. learn on the job, making mistakes, getting, you know, like getting those weird conversations and the stuff. Yeah. You learn by, and so how long does it take? Fucking years. Yeah. Someone walks into your gym, I've had it before, walks into my gym like, yeah, I'm gonna do a, a tea cleanse for the next six days before we go to go on vacation so I can shed a little weight. And I'm like, you just put on a great, as a man too, I'm like, you just put on like a nice amount of muscle all fall yeah. and winter. You're as leaner than you were in the summer. Yes, exactly. And sure as shit comes in four days later, just dying, eats shit on the workout, just, you know. Yeah. And comes in, he's like, yeah, nine pounds lighter than I was when I started. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, great. Yeah, but and then you're so now you're weaker and you're gonna go drink beer all week for on vacation, right? And, and you're gonna come back gonna without crash. muscle and yeah, fat, exactly. And you're gonna be wrecked. I gotta start over with you now, right? And or you're gonna quit because you realize, well, and then you'll be blamed for it most likely. And me and telling you that you starving yourself before you go on vacation is a bad idea just makes me the bad guy, and right. you have to be willing to be that guy. But that also that also um, uh, creates trust. When he comes back from vacation and realize he fucked up. Because yeah. if you become that guy who's agreeable all the time, this is what the relationship is, which means every <laughs> exactly every single time there's a mistake being made, he's gonna be able to blame you for it. Yeah. Because you never told him that fairness is too small. Because you never once imparted a little bit of responsibility on those things. Right. And by the way, like how it look at any relationship that you have in life. Like if I can't come to you for any truthful, not even advice, but just like, where, I'm, where mm -hmm. do I stand right now? Yeah. Right? If every time you just lie to me because you don't want to have that difficult conversation, I know I can't ask you anything. Because you can't trust them at all. Yeah, I can't trust no. you on anything. But again, that's not the coach's job. Your job is to, is to explain where they've done certain yeah. things wrong, but not, you, don't, you don't have to be an asshole. You don't have no, to, and no. I think it's important. Let me, yes. let me make a good example of this. We, we learned a lot in devising sales systems and things like that in that line of work. And I can tell you this, that the best thing that I ever, we ever put together was in which we gave the actual decision-making power to the customer, which meant, uh, this is a small thing, but, but like when there was a problem, and it needs to be fixed, normally I come in, I fix it, I say it's fixed, I might tell you what it is, but we'd send you the bill, right? Mm -hmm. In our case here, it's no, no, no. Here's what it is. Here are five possible solutions to then explain what they are. You can go as far as you want, you can feel as confident, most warranty or the lowest, and it's just gonna, we're just gonna fix mm -hmm. what's deal. But there's five tiers, different prices, look them over if you have any questions. That single act of them looking it over and being able to just make the an informed mm -hmm. decision, yes. but making it themselves, your our actual customer satisfaction rating, when with followed up on, would almost double when right. those yes. systems were used. Which meant 
Yes, you, you, so our job is to inform them and empower them to then make those decisions. So coming at and saying, you fucking idiot, don't do yeah, that, right. isn't the way to do it either. And coaching is a uh, journey. That's it's why it's a hard job. Yeah. But, but that's the thing is we can't be heavy handed with it, which that's the side I always erred on in coaching was I didn't take the lesson yeah, I learned in too. another thing. I was yeah. just like, what the fuck are you doing? Yes, me too. <laughs> I was a little bit on that side. But I'm still am. But that, but that little bit. So what I mean by that is people want to feel like they've made their own decision. And then, and then they that. need to trust you and your information then in order to choose yeah, your and I, and I understand that. But there's, maybe it's an ethic conversation then. But there's that moment where you draw a law in the sign going, I'm not going past that. Yeah. Right. And the fact that heat and air conditioning technicians have better ethics than we do bothers me. Yeah. Not all, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's yeah. the thing. Is yeah. like not not to I'm not criticizing yes. you guys, I'm criticizing us yes, guys. Yes, 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 yes. The fact that we have actually no nothing hanging over <laughs> our head from an ethics perspective bothers yeah. me. And what it bothers me too is that that world we're creating, yeah. it's starting to eat us. Because I see that in the business side of things when it comes to coaching. Not the business to play, like the way the marketing people are selling business to gym owners. Mm -hmm. it's, it's starting to be something where we're telling gym owners what they want to hear, which means you need more people through the door. Because you and your gym, and your community, awesome. and everything is perfect. It's perfect. You're you unique. don't need to get better You're, at what you do. Both your parents love you. <laughs> they didn't get divorced because of you. It's <laughs> it was you. It was it because was you were you. such a punk. It was, um, it was, yeah. it was, it was you. But 50%. <laughs> Him banging his secretary had nothing to do with it. Um, the, no, but it's part of the conversation where like, like they're all like, you just need more people. Because that's easy, because that means you're successful instead of 80 members, I have 100. Yeah. Right. But no one is asking you if you can actually handle 20 more people. Do you have the coaching to handle? Do you have the time to handle 20 more people? Coaching, equipment, material, structure of the gym, culture of the gym. How are you doing with your coaches? There is so much of that done that relies on you being better at what you do. Yeah. Or bettering your craft on a daily, and it's a shitload of work. But it's a lot easier to, for people to come and say, oh, just get 20, let me show you how to get 20 more people. Mm -hmm. I'll show you Instagram. I'll show you how to use this. I'll show you how to use that. And so all you need is more people in the gym. That is not true. That comes after so much more work on your part before you can attract and, those 20 and people. And look outside the industry, in the restaurant industry. Right. You know what restaurants have people lined up all the way around the block? Yeah. The ones that are fucking good. Not, I promise you, it's not because they advertise the best. It's not because they have the shiniest shit that goes out there. It's or because, because they put more table outside. Yeah, right. Because that's what they're telling you in the fitness yeah. industry to do. You Just put more, more tables. Yeah. You can seat more people. You'll make yeah. more money. No, because yeah. your food is still shit. Yes. <laughs> or, <laughs> even, or, shit, or even if, you know or even I mean? if it's good, and let's use the restaurant analogy. Yes, exactly. But you are slammed your processes are right. completely slammed you're, you're takes getting through 45 these, minutes to you're get getting through these lunch right. rushes by the skin of your teeth without pissing these people off but yep. you're making it happen but you're that's the feeling where you're like something's yep. got to change a lot of gyms are in that case i'm doing a good job but i not making enough money still and i don't know how to do it and 20 and, more people and it's like getting 20 more people might collapse that system right. or at least just really break you. by the way you have great food all your waiters are assholes mm -hmm. sounds like paris um, <laughs> is it going to work? You better have amazing food. Yes. Because if your food is just good and your waiters are bad, you're in trouble. All the great restaurants in France, have, they don't have waiters. Yeah. They're, it's, it's, we have a French word. It's a different thing. There's two professions when it comes to that in France. You have the guy who brings you your coffee, and you have the, which is a garçon, mm -hmm. and you have the server, which is the waiter, but the real waiter. Yeah at the great restaurant. That dude, it's a career. Mm -hmm. You're not making, it's, he has a career. He knows just as much as everybody else, if actually usually more. He knows almost as much as a sommelier when it comes to, to wine. wine, not wine, but he knows almost as much as the chef about the food. He knows almost as much as the owner about as the, the, the history of the yeah. stuff and everything, that guy can tell you everything there is to know about the restaurant. That painting over there, he'll tell you where it was made, when, what it was bought, all that stuff. That is a fucking craft. Yeah. And 
they have to be there when you need, but you can't see them everywhere. So you have a great restaurant, and then you put your fork and your knife a certain way. I know. Don't take me there. Exactly. I don't go there. I understand that <laughs> this is not your language, but just the way you put your fork, because when you put your fork and the knife on the right side, you know, mm -hmm. you're telling him to come and take the plate. Okay. Yeah, but that's the language. This is a craft. It's not like, I mean, yeah. th right, so that's, you have a great That's way different than the, hey, welcome to Dave and Buster's. Exactly. That right. I'm used so, to, I'm like this but you fucking have, guy. Like you go to France <laughs> and you go to the restaurant and you have that guy. Yeah. That restaurant would fail yeah. because people expect more out of the experience. Mm -hmm. So you don't need Instagram. You need to fix the, the waiters, exactly the experience of your gym because that reflects on what level you are. What Glee Glassman said, clean your bathroom. Mm -hmm. In every gym, that's always the first thing I checked. Yeah. I, I did it even before he said it. I was always doing it because that tell me, you know, it's the M&M story with, the, with Metallica. Yeah. It's, 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 that's where the difference is. So getting 20 more people, can you handle it? Should you handle it? Did you fix all the main issues that you have first? But that's not what they're selling now. That's not what they, they're not selling you. Sorry. They're not selling you like you need to get better at coaching your coaches. They're saying you just you need, need more. They just say just more. Yeah. That is the easiest thing to say, easiest thing to hear. Oh, if I get more, my problems are over. No, they just started. And you make, and by the way, return rate, like you get 20 people, 30 leave. Mm -hmm. Because Plus, your old clients get pissed because you're not paying attention to them yeah. and everything. Like they, they are fucking selling you a, a mirage, a, a, yeah. an illusion. I, I just think that with, with all of that, what did I see here? I, I even had a note of this here is, um, yeah, it's, it's just a, a really matter of just not addressing the problem itself. And we have that because we put it like carbs versus fat. Let's talk yeah, about that. Yeah. You know um, what a lot of people say have carbs and then don't promote fat because saying eating more fat, people associate it with getting more fat, Yeah. getting fat. Like yeah. I swear, I have it's that. It's a word game. And you have to, we have to understand the way people's right. words associate together right and but that, at the same time if you are saying people to have carbs instead of fat because they're going to think fat makes me fat again you're not a fucking coach i just like to add the whatever qualifying terms sit before the fat first like well it'd be nice if you'd add just a little bit of extra unsaturated fat at this time of day because then it's like even though that's fat yeah they, they, they go oh that sound that had a three syllable uh, or four syllable word that's in front of it. so it's probably not just regular fat or yeah, it's, it's, that's, that must not be, I don't know what kind yeah. makes you not fat, but, but it's, it's not that the same. one. Yeah. And, and that's usually how it goes. But what I want to do is I, I want to go through, we've got a little bit of time left, not a lot, but I want to go through each of these things, the nutrition yeah, 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 and yeah, the yeah. business. Yeah. And I want us to kind of go, we don't have to go into detail, but I want to talk about what they really do need. Right. In each step. Right, right, right. So the nutrition is the one I'd like to start with too. Right. So we see the macros, they tell right. you what, what so you're doing is fine. Nutrition. What you want. The first thing, the two constraints, well, actually it's one constraint, and that's a, it should start with that. Otherwise, I don't even know why we're having a conversation. Circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. You need energy during the day. You need to sleep well at night. Sleep has been associated to... So the, the deregulation of circadian rhythm, was that nice enough? I liked it, yeah. It sounds scientific, right? I could come yeah. up with one, but what? I thought it sounded scientific, <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, was linked to major depression, like as a clinical mm -hmm. depression, so, like, and, you know, um, uh, MDD, yes. like medi uh, major depression disorder, uh, was linked with schizophrenia, not causation, just correlation. Yep, yep. Like, I'm not saying one causes the other, but it was shown that uh, MDD, um, schizophrenia, like a number of stuff like that, had were shown like there's a major correlation with disturb, uh, disturbing the circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. um, you had all the issue of the gut flora, yeah. where, where we were showing that all the problem with the, the gut flora, the gut flora is one of the ways to set circadian rhythms. It's uh, light, food, and behavior. Those three things said circadian rhythms. So when it comes to food, the impact on the gut flora and circadian rhythm is massive. We've seen gut flora and behavior. We know undigested protein in the colon has a massive effect on the gut flora and is responsible for low-grade inflammation, which is one of the signs of uh, fucked up health. Mm -hmm. Like it goes on and on and on and on and on like that. The way you sleep is the telltale sign of what's going in your body because it tells us how your circadian rhythms are going. Yeah. 
So if we don't take that into account when we design nutrition, you're being sold a false, false bill of goods. Yeah. I'm sorry, it starts there. Like mm. the fact that you can have a nutrition program that does not take into account your sleep, to me, is mind boggling. Mm -hmm. By the way, can you get results without sleep anyway? Are you going to build muscle without sleep? We know you build muscle, muscle at night, mm -hmm. like deep sleep or like release of growth hormone that happens during a phase of sleep. Like you, we know that when you don't sleep enough, you hold water. So here goes your body fat percentage. Yeah. And now before people jump in and say, well, there's plenty of people that just eat macros and get bigger and gain muscle and do all the stuff that way. I just want to make sure to point out that like it shouldn't have to be always maybe that hard because one of the things you're saying is yeah. you are probably still going to synthesize some protein into muscle somewhere throughout your day and somewhere in the sleep that you're getting. And so you're eating X amount, you're sleeping X amount, and it's getting you somewhere until it doesn't anymore. Right. And what got you there now, what are you going to do? More but of what that? If, what you, do you use more yeah. of an inefficient Right, exactly. Process. But by the way, what if there's a price to pay? Then the side effects are exactly. increased. So if you have to My eat 10% more yeah. of an inefficient process. But you get 50% more and, side effects. And, and the side effects are just going to be higher and higher. But, but that's my point too is, like you're saying it, it works. Because I hear that all the time. Well, that guy did it. I, and I, when I say works, I mean from a the, the metrics that these people right, are exactly. choosing to use. No, but let's I'm say, bigger. Right. I'm, no, but let's yeah. say it works. But what if five years down the road, then it breaks your body. Yeah. What if you're 30 and then you go, yeah, and then at 35, because I've seen that too, yeah. people suddenly, the, the lack of sleep or that stuff starts to catch up and now they have health markers of 35 that are a problem. It takes Is this still four working? or five months. To right, get exactly, to do stuff like that. How many people go on to all that stuff and then a year later, they give up on the macros and just go fucking nuts and gain, like how yeah. many people have lost 20 pounds and gained 30? Yeah. Right, so oh. it's not like it's, when they say working, like, because that's what, um, they always have an impression that as long as you gain muscle, you're doing fine. It's not that simple. How many obese people have lost 50 pounds and gained 100, right? So it shows you that that stuff doesn't necessarily always work. The problem with the macros, it doesn't take into account a number of things, psychological issues, <coughs> uh, societal issues, like your parents, stuff like that. There is so much more yeah, the, that goes into all this. The problem isn't the food or the amount of food. It's what's making you eat that right. food and that Right, because otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And then therefore there would be no problem. Because so someone know. who can fix problems is smart. Someone who avoids them is smarter. Yeah. That's the key, is avoid the problems. And lack of sleep will create problems, will make you want to have more carbs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You want to stop craving carbs, start sleeping better. So, so how do we do that? That's the question, and that's what the protocol was. Yeah. So we go via the nutrition protocol, and then, and then, but, but with a priority, especially in the beginning of sleep, because that's yes. your big indicator. So second one is timeline. Mm -hmm. It works now, in the next two months, that's great. It has to work two years from now, and it has to still be working 20 years from now. Not that you follow the protocol for 20 years, but it should be something that makes you healthier, therefore you could keep going for years and years and years. If you can't keep what you're doing right now, going for a year straight, you're doing something wrong. And for those that maybe might be teaching or, or, or coaching nutrition mm -hmm. out there like this, like that's how it should be communicated then. I think in a way right. that isn't like, it isn't, it's not even a tough love conversation. It's like, this is how this works. And this is what I do. And this is what I'm willing that's to do. That's the job. That's it. That is the job. Yeah. You don't get to say, yeah, but then you're, then that's Doc, a different you know, job. Doctors. Say what you will about how they execute all of this, but like, but there there is a, a, a something you know an oath to do no harm, and and I do think right. though that those of us that get into coaching, like, while maybe we're not one hundred percent averse to harm and <laughs> as a risk, there still is like like the helping is the nature of the business. So like, the way you described going about nutrition to somebody is a way that will then that will help them. The can, other way is going to appease them until they find something else. Can we have higher ethics than doctors, please? Yeah. Let's do they're way, they, by the way, they're way below yeah. heat and, and uh, air conditioning technicians. I guess. Doctors are way <laughs> below. Like, yeah, do no harm except give them oxycontin for yeah. low back pain. But outside of that, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let's do better than that one. Uh, but yeah, no, but okay, yeah, but you're right though. Yeah. It is that's the job. Yeah. That is the job. Like this is a conversation we need to have yeah. because like it. It worries me. Yeah. So then we jump over to training. In yeah. training, someone walks into your gym, whether they're a little overweight or just detrained or whatever, they just have something they want to accomplish. And they come to you and they say, 
it always just starts because anyone I want to be a little bit leaner or I want to lose 10 mm -hmm. pounds what do that person what do they need to hear right so it's always it's always the same is so that's a conversation you don't you don't have to tell them that but really the first thing you should look at is that they don't get hurt, right? Which mm -hmm. means you need to build a structure. They want to lose 10 pounds. That means they're going to do cardiovascular capacity, right? Easiest way is to tell them start running at night, right? But they can't run. Feet, hips, lower back, all that stuff, just can't take it. There's, what if someone has never been that active, right? All right, so there are skills that need to be developed first. The capacity to go up and down. Mm -hmm. Like a burpee, some people, is going to take a while for them to be able to actually perform a movement like that. There's an entire structure that's going to have so to be often, built. So often, sometimes you come in and you just have to like kind of assess and clean up the crime scene first a little bit. Put the bit. brakes, yeah, because yeah. As, co as coaches, we always, we always want to do the flashy stuff. Yeah. The stuff that, by the way, so we want to do two things, either flashy or the stuff you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I still make that mistake. It's like, no, strong man is better. Yes, because I like yeah. it. But um, it also because I know it better. So that, therefore, but you, you know what I mean? Yes. Like th there's, that's always that. All the flashy stuff because it makes you look better. But then you're not training the person. You're just training the person for everybody to watch how good you are as a coach. Yeah. That's dangerous as well, right? So there's going to have to be what the person says. There's going to have to be a translation of that so you understand what is needed. Mm -hmm. What the person wants versus what they need is not the same. And this has to be part of the conversation. And what they tell you they want versus what they really want. Sometimes you have, uh, to, get the, through, yeah. you have to get through the words yeah. of it a little bit. Yeah. That's where... Because here's the truth. Skill. People want to come in because it is easier to say, I just really want to hear that if I give you my 150 bucks a month, that you're just going to make sure that I have abs in three months. You know what I mean? That's kind of the... Oh, that I love people. myself. But, but, but what they're not going to do is they're not going to go in and say, right away to kind of a stranger, no matter how good you are at connecting yeah. and talking to people right away, you know, in your intro. <laughs> unless you're Richard. It's, it's gonna be, yeah, unless you're Richard. But it's really tough to be like, you know what, just, I just have not liked the way my body's looked for the last five years. I have years. not liked myself. And, and I haven't yeah. liked myself and a, for a wife, for a husband. It's like, you know, my, anxiety. my spouse yeah. seems less interested in me. I want right. to, th those are things that like, that's the things that's that they the want. Yeah. That is like, that is not 10 I lost pounds. my libido. Yeah. I lost my libido I am, completely. I have completely women lost have, my sex drive. I've lost, yeah. yeah, I've lost my um, periods. Yeah. I've lost my sex drive completely. Those are the real stuff. Yeah. yeah and, and I promise you that stuff is more important to them than the 10 pounds. Yeah. And they can have all of it. Yes. But it's just a matter of like... You get the sex drive back, the right trust me, they lose the 10 pounds. Because yes. a lot of this is related. Yeah. yeah. Well, not from cardio activity you, in bed. That's where I was the, going. Yeah, 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 I'm like, not I'm from like, that. The but, way I do it, yeah. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not from that. But, but, but by the way, that brings, uh, that brings a very good point, though, as a constraint. Hormonal yeah. levels. Yeah. How is that not a constraint of training? Yeah. You have someone who has low testosterone, not from a medical point of view, because I just want steroids, so therefore I have low yeah. testosterone. I'm talking about the guy, like, you, he comes in and you can tell confidence is down, mm -hmm. muscle mass is not being built and everything. You know, Difficulty gaining size. You know, like, hormonally the, speaking, yep. it's fucked up. Why? Because maybe he's not sleeping, too much stress or whatever. Shouldn't that be the first step? Mm -hmm. Let's bring you back to a functioning body. Yeah. A, a functioning body pr has the right amount of hormonal balance in the system. Shouldn't we try people to get to uh, a, 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 a homeostasis, but what I mean by that is a better center. Yes. That should be the, the job first, Yeah. right? So you see people like, like that, like the first thing we should look at is like, how do I bring them back to a healthier center, which means hormonal levels are higher, Sleep all that stuff. And you don't need to too. test it, you know yeah. the signs. So it goes back to that. Can you move? Can you breathe? Can you do nasal breathing? Do you have any control of your movement? Do you sleep at night? Are you cranky all the time? Are you, you know, pounding sugar and caffeine just to go through the day? Isn't that the job first? Yeah. Look, imagine the world, what we could do for the world if we gave people an hour more of good sleep. And I'm not talking about quantity, I'm talking quality. Because no. some people won't, won't have more than six, seven. But what if we gave them a day where they wake up in the morning, feel, I feel rested. I feel good this morning. Yeah. Imagine what we could do with that for the world. Guys, if that's not how you're waking up either, dudes, and, 
first off, it's it's not always you that way either, either wrong. but as soon as that becomes the way, I don't fucking understand how people live the other I, way. By the way, I learned no, no, whole no, life it is the way, because I wake up, like, I woke up this morning, uh, again, rested, so I'm always waking up like this, but I'm rested going like, let's go to a coffee shop and fuck shit up. Yep. That's my day every day. Then Winding after that, right the away. day can get away from you. Yeah. But I'm waking up going like, let's kill it, and yeah. then, uh, then it happens or it doesn't. Yeah. But I wake up, rested, ready to go. If you have less energy when you wake up than when you went to bed, there's a fucking problem that need resolving. So yeah. before we talk about the 10 kilos of muscle, before we talk about your 100 pounds on your squat and everything, let's talk about the fact that you wake up less rested than when you went to bed. Yeah. That alone tells you you're not going to get the 10 kilos of muscle unless you do some stupid shit like pumping the steroids and then the pre-workouts and then all that stuff. Yeah. That's my problem with the fitness industry is when you start telling people what they want, you know what they want? Never acknowledge that is that the problem is theirs as well, yeah. that they are responsible. And we pretty much kind of, actually before we loop back around, that's what we had addressed about the business side of things too. Is yeah, that okay, for, that too. For a gym, that is the thing is it's... Well, let's talk to gym owners directly. Yeah, as a gym Because you're being lied to. Yeah. Like that's... Me, that's my thing for gym owners out there, and I don't talk CrossFit, I'm talking powerlifting, strongman, yeah. including CrossFit, personal training, everybody. The, there's only one way that business consultants or whatever help you with business, it's a systematization, it's a sell thing. Yeah. It's they're making you work with a number so you can have more people in your gym telling you that's the solution. You are not Starbucks. You are a hipster coffee shop. There's the, the stuff we've been studying with Tyler, like the McKinsey mm -hmm. uh, system, is very set on having certain management practices. Yeah. And the whole Starbucks stuff, like leads and more people, is one of four yeah. practices. Only one of four. There are three others you know nothing about because no one is telling you about them. And guess what? One of the three is where you are as a gym, a very specific one, and that's not the one being brought to you because that's the one that requires work from you, yeah. that requires from you to be better at you. your craft, on you, yeah. on your coaches, all that stuff, that require you to do work in your gym, yeah. instead of thinking the problem is outside, that you're not out there enough, that you just need people to know about you. No, you need to clean up your house yeah. first. We had a, I actually got a message about some of the numbers. You talk about getting better and what it takes to work on you and your staff. Yep. And I'll think, if you're a gym owner, the amount of money that people invest in educating their right. coaches yeah, yeah, in a, goals, in a yeah. real business out there. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope there are some gyms out there that are doing things on this level, but not, not, none that I've talked to. Not and this is a, a small town heating and air conditioning company with 12 employees. 12. And less than half of them are also non-revenue producing. Upfront office sales right. out of the right, shit. Right, right. Which is in a, in six a, people which, actually which pay in the bills. a business... Yeah. Like that, that's a tough structure to get yeah. underneath, but it gives you the real yeah. ability to move. Um, so I asked him just kind of what kind of numbers he did, because he spent so much time investing in our training, constant team meetings to make sure the vision mm -hmm. was on point and going through details and everything was very, very, very focused. And so I wanted to know how much money because I know he tracks everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll said, tell you right now. I said, I said yeah. I exact, no, this was very quick response. I said, because actually he had just done it the other day. They're getting ready for the end of the year. But um, he said, training hours and costs this year, an average of $5,329 per person. That's total. That's across all 12, actually including himself. $5,000 per year per person. Per year per person. Then travel expenses for them to go to those things for registration, lodging, meals, and travel to... And this isn't just some fluffy training thing. Yeah. Some of these are very specific. They might be split into four or five throughout a year. Some of them are sales. Some of them are confidence. Some is technical. You just kind yeah. of find them as you find them. This isn't a format that we work in. Um, about another $3,300 per person annually. Then they spend an additional $15,000 annually on recruiting new staff. This is very hard to get firm numbers, but... He said when he goes through, this is money he uses for the purpose of screening, interviewing. He has personality tests done on people as they make the before he gets to meet him in person. So they make the first cut before they get his time. They'll do a personality test, see where they fit into the business as humans, and, and see if that's what he needs. And then he goes all the way through. He says, however, this year we did really well with those efforts. We hired 10 total people, and we got three solid new team members out of it. Seven didn't make it. He said, normally... 
we will bring on only two or three, and if we're lucky, one is around at the end of the year. That is the risk that it takes, and the amount But of investment it even takes. Even without the risk, 8,000 per person per, per year. Yeah. 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 That's $700 a month yeah. are per you, coach. Are you investing that in your coaches getting better, right. in you getting better? In the talent, because we are a talent and a performer. And a, exactly. what goes on on your That's gym floor and in between problem. your we people. We are a talent industry. We are not a, a service, funnel yeah. industry. <laughs> yeah, we're not a service industry yeah. like a hotel. Uh, by the way, a hotel still has to get good. Yeah. Like Starbucks and stuff like that, like where it's all about just consistency, just do the workout. Yeah. And that is not what we do. We, we are, are talent never based. We are going to be industry. a quality or a, a, a quantity industry. No. I, I never want to be that. I never wanted to be that in any industry. But you can't. I want to be not good feasible. enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We stand, like, otherwise, we're talking about 50 people yeah. per class for one coach. Yeah. And then, well, guess what? That's not what we do anymore. Yeah. Whether it's strong men or stuff, like, if you have over 20 people per coach, we're starting to get into an area where, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this isn't coaching anymore. And if we break it down, that, that company that I worked for, we charged, I charged pretty much on average double what the other places in town would do. Yeah. Um, right. that we're making the same repair, technically, fixing the same thing, whatever the same. But what we sold, which was like we heard the other day about the Ferrari experience, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. What I would always tell people, because they would ask me, well, Why? it's kind of expensive. Yeah. Why do you charge that much an hour? I said, I don't charge. I don't sell hours and I don't sell parts. I sell a service. No. This is this. This is my service that I can figure it out. I was able to be here in 20 minutes because we were then overstaffed, had really good upfront property or processes so you called you could get somebody some places you call you don't get anybody yeah and so that costs money and all those things yeah. we built in to simply be better yep. so you want to make more money you want to do more business get better first that costs money <laughs> and that costs time. And that costs, costs training effort. and that costs you having meetings with your coaches yeah. and training with them and making sure they understand and paying your coaches and hard conversations this is my boss was a guy who basically acted as a therapist to people when there was interpersonal things he's like oh fuck so yeah. he's got to go mediate and get people on and that's that's leadership that's, that's helping that's the people leadership. get better by the and, way leadership yeah. we are We are an industry also based, it's talent acquisition, it's leadership, it's all the stuff that they're not fucking selling you through Instagram or stuff like yeah. that. This is where it starts. I'm not saying you can have social media, but man, does it come down yeah. the pipe before you do all that. Like imagine if Strong Fit was about Instagram, like I'd be just, I'd just be dating Brazilian women to show <laughs> their asses to everybody and I'll have 10 million followers. Julian Bilzerian, let's do it. I think we could do it, guys. Oh, I could. Let's just scrap all this. I could, I could make a <laughs> killing on that one. I can't play poker, but everything else. We don't have to. Oh, I'll, I'll make it work. I'll do strongmen and bitches. That, that'll be the name of the, of the Instagram. <laughs> New T-shirts coming out next week, guys. Exactly. So to wrap up, uh, you with can a get French the, accent, it works so well. You can get the strongman and bitches T-shirt over at strongfitacruel.com. With a French accent, the <laughs> Bilzerian thing with like, I look better, like with a thing and the French accent and That's like true. a few porn star in the back falling off the pool table. Oh, I'm I'm killing it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but yeah. So imagine if we were to do strong fit based on like let's get more just people. Followers, Instagram, just followers. But I did not come up with the content. Yeah. You know why we don't have like the Facebook ads and the Instagram ads? First of all, because I'm not paying for that bullshit. Yeah. And but second of all, it's because I'm busy coming up with all the shit so we can talk to you guys about it. Mm -hmm. So the podcast, that requires money from us, yeah. a shitload of time. Uh, there's, there's so much work involved into Strong Fit yeah. that you guys will never see. The amount of time that I spend running those fucking studies. <laughs> that yeah. Those things, man, they, they are, you know what I mean? Like, but I do it, why? Because then it allows me to create the base of knowledge that I need to talk in simple ways yeah. about all that stuff. That requires so much time. So, But I'm not, this isn't, The growth of strong fit does not go through more Instagram followers. No. Anybody who thinks, and I had people thinking that, yes. you're mistaken. You know, how are we going to grow strong fit? By us becoming better at what we do. Yeah. We just started a podcast a year ago. We're going to get better. Mm -hmm. I know I'm still growing into this. And as we get better, then we'll have more success. That's what will give us more followers, not buying them or doing yeah. ads or all that shit. We They could have started shinier, crispier with a big, yes. huge launch, and yep. we could have had all sorts of shit in the beginning when we didn't know where it was going to go. By the way, Strong Fit has <laughs> I've never borrowed money. We have no debt. Yeah. We're just in the black always, every single month. Yeah. I've never borrowed money to do a launch 
of yep. anything or stuff like that. So we make mistakes, of course, we, we get better every time. And by doing what we do, guess what? We have better and better people wanting to work with us. Mm -hmm. That's a measure of success. Talent yeah. acquisition is through the roof because, and you know what? That's actually Dan Bilzerian who say that. Get them to chase you, don't chase them. <laughs> Right, uh, But that's exactly that. Yeah. People chase us. The talent comes to us saying, I want to work with you. That's when you know you're doing good. Do you know how much time and energy it takes on you, like for you to be that good, that great people want to work with you? It takes years of fucking work. Yeah. And that's what you need to hear, is that part. It's you. And I don't see it in a mean way, but him saying, if great people are not coming to see you to work with you, that means you're not doing good enough. Yeah. That's where it is. You, as a human being, you have to become better as a coach, as, as everything. And that requires time and money and patience. And, but that's the job. Yeah. That well, is the job. And I think we've, I, I don't remember who it was. It might have been, uh, might have been Lou and Chantel at Camp 17, but they said that it's not tough love. It's just love. That's what love is. That's what we're doing here. We want you to get better. That's what this is. Yeah. So, um, a clean appreciation of where you are. Yeah. And I have people telling me, like for example, like we make fun of it all the time, but that I'm not structured, and the business has suffered from it. Yeah. But now I'm at a stage where I have the right people in place, and you'll see this year we'll change the structure of Strong Fit, and I decided I'm going to get good at business. Yeah. But you know what I decided now? Like literally yesterday, I'm going to get good at business because the rest of the time was used developing Strong Fit. The, the principles of strong fit. I have a fairly good grasp on where what I want to do with it and where I want to go with it. Now, I'm not done. The system will change six times in the next three months anyway. But I know where and how I want to get to that now because I have a certain base of knowledge accumulated that now I'm like, good, next stage, let's get good at business. So yeah. you'll see strong fit will grow as a business tremendously this year because I'm going to black swan the shit out of it. Yeah. But I've spent the last 10 years of my life growing strong fit principles to where they are now. Now I'm comfortable with where they are. They're not done, but I am more comfortable. So now I've decided to be like, oh yeah, let me study business. The McKinsey stuff is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, but that's what it takes though. Yeah. I could have started with say, well, let me just do business. Yeah, but with what? I didn't have the knowledge. If I don't have the yeah. knowledge, what is it I'm selling anyway? Yes, right. Yeah. You have something to sell before you talk about selling better. I'm like, how about selling better product? Yes. Because that sells by itself then. Yeah, yeah. Being, being the guy who's really good at selling the pen off the table works real great in a job interview, but like, I kind of would rather be attached to a better product than just that. Well, <laughs> that you know what I mean? By, by the yeah. way, that guy who sells a pen, he doesn't attract the great talent. No. The guy who attracts the great talent is the guy who's creating something that is so important. Like Steve Jobs apparently was the biggest asshole, yeah. but he was such a genius and what he was producing as such value that everybody wanted to work with him, even though they knew he was an asshole. Yeah. Right. So th that's, th that's what people get attached to is that it's like, they want, they want the message. They want like to know why they're working. The people we have working with us now is because they know what they can do with the strong fit principles. Yeah. That's what they're being attracted to. Is like, this can work for my field as well. And that's where they're coming in. But that took fucking so much time yeah. and energy and money to develop. Time I did not spend on social media or all that stuff. Yeah. Even though Strong Men and Bitches is coming this year. God, but, that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, exactly. God, we are going to just get blasted for that one, but I'm okay with it. Oh, well. oh whatever. <laughs> At right. this stage, I, don't, uh, <laughs> I so don't care. Bring it on. So I don't live in the U.S. anymore. You can't do anything to me. I'm not on Twitter, so you can't deplatform well, well, me. My, my thing is this: always, I was, I was like, but it is funny. And no, but, I think okay. that's what matters. We don't make money <laughs> off the YouTube videos on the. Yeah, we're not you can't deplatform us in any shape or form. That's true. Yeah. Right? I didn't criticize transgender people. Yeah. I'm not on Twitter, and I'm not monetizing my videos. Yeah. So you want to be offended as strong men and bitches? Have fun. I did say a couple Epstein things though when we had Bill on. That might be we might get yanked. <laughs> oh, that's true. You can't do conspiracies anymore. You say one word about flat Earth. Fuck. I read that. This, I read that today where they yeah. were saying less people watch conspiracy theories on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, it's because they're you all beginning banned. The algorithm is there's. You can look it up. It's completely. Yeah. It'll actually shift you. One, those accounts are getting banned completely with no notice, for nothing. But, and then and then YouTube will then take you to 
mainstream stuff. Go, go uh, Einstein didn't kill himself, and you will see mostly the funny stuff. Yes, uh, there's also this. If you, and, if, and Eddie Bravo. If, if you look up, also there's ways then. Did you see the way how to resist suicide? Which one? Oh, there's Eddie Bravo posted a meme yeah, yeah, yeah. where um, he's showing how to um, stop someone oh, from breaking your neck. Doing this. Yeah, he's, <laughs> and he says like how to how to prevent <laughs> suicide. <laughs> The uh, and and it, but it, but it is quite funny. So actually, Google and YouTube, it's the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. They, but but these major media outlets are taking the term. Notice anything that happened with the Epstein thing? Now it's they didn't talk about the story. These news outlets were talking about now. All these conspiracy theorists yeah. think there's a thing. So Google Epstein conspiracy. All you're going to get is results about major news outlets talking about how conspiracy theorists are assholes about this. And so that's why I can't hardly use Google if I'm having doing fun conspiracy rabbit holes. I got to use DuckDuckGo, which is just simply a data-based algorithm, and there's no like manipulation via money. How you know? long before Google loses their grip? They're gonna fuck everything power. up by this for sure. Yeah, but then they'll lose their grip on everything, power eventually. Exactly. Everything exactly. Someone gets, is bound to come up with a new thing sooner or later. What happens is every one of these people that get deplatformed from YouTube, they look at like there. Alex Jones. He's a lunatic, but, yep. but I fucking he's right 30% of the time. And <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Yeah, okay. sometimes. Yeah, but the other 70 is crazy. Yes, but 30% is yeah. right. Yeah. And so, and so, but the problem is when they just shut him down, they put him, he was like, what do I do? Well, he did. He just put his own platform, his own website, his own space, hosts yeah. the videos on his own. And I'm like, you just fucking gave him the keys to the city. He gets yeah. all the money now. And he gets, Nobody can shut him and down. He's, he, he's it's now go infrastructure. He's completely nuts and he on do his stuff. He you have no control whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, because now you can even stop him when you talk and about the Sandy Hook massacre. And, and now I can, yeah. you can find him. You couldn't before. You, you know, yeah, they could just right. algorithmically wipe him off. That's so crazy. But yep. uh, so now that we just talked about those subjects for a minute, you're never going to find us on YouTube <laughs> exactly. again. And uh, <laughs> anyway, everything platform. else is strongfit.com, yep. strongfitequipment.com, or .eu. Uh, Strongfit one on Instagram, Tyler F and so on Instagram. UK thirty two rare barracuda, Manta Fitness in Australia. And Julian's Corner. And uh, Strongman and Bitches one. Com. Submit any designs that you may have for a Strongman and Bitches shirt to Tyler at Strongfit.com. <laughs> yeah, I have a few Brazilian <laughs> models in mind to do this. <laughs> I'd like it to be like a just a really god awful like motorcycle commercial motorcycle t shirt that is so gaudy that no one would wear. Oh no, we, we can do like you know seventies <laughs> type. Yes. Like that? Oh, yeah. Maybe maybe we shouldn't be in charge of this design. Oh yeah. We'll crowdsource it. Send us exactly. something, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>